Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying an amazing config so far. Um, my name's Sam. Um, I'm an Associate Creative Director on the design team at Zendesk. And I've been focused on campaigns, things like Thank You Machine, a branded documentary series called Stories About Helpful People, and a project I'm going to talk about today. Here's the last time the team got together. Um, to give you a bit of an intro to the team, Zendesk Design is an amazing bunch of designers, writers, producers, animators, editors, um, and loads more. And that's me in the middle. Uh, delighted to be meeting so many of my teammates for the first time. Now today I'm going to be talking about how to design with a modular mindset. I'm sure you've heard of modular design, but we're going to try and take things one level above and how to approach an entire project with modularity. So this is from the art direction up front. We're going to cover some site design stuff and then also talk about the back end as well. And that's how we approached a recent project at Zendesk called CX Trends 2022. This is an editorial style trends report. Um, it lays out what's hot, what's coming up for the next 12 months within the customer experience industry. And it's really one of the biggest marketing drivers for Zendesk. So we had a ton of goals against you know, bottom line numbers, pipeline, stuff like that. No pressure for the team. I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown on the project. So the report itself was pretty complex. Um, we had 7,000 words across eight different chapters. And we were starting the design with only a draft of the report. It had to be translated into 14 different languages, two different formats, the interactive experience, and then a downloadable PDF. And then we also knew that we were going to reactivate the project a couple months down the line for new content post-launch. Now, our approach for the whole project was modularity. So this started with the initial strategy, and it really became a mindset across the entire team. So it was about being flexible, using this kind of plug and play, mix and match approach in every one of our work streams across the project. Um, let's take a look at why we chose that direction. And we'll also cover some stuff about why it might be right for you on your next project. So for complex projects, it really pays to be flexible by definition. Um, and by building this kind of modular approach at the strategy level, it meant that CX Trends was ready to scale right from the outset. And if you do the math, 7,000 words times 14 languages is just a mammoth amount of content and really a lot to think about for the team. So we had to be ready for whatever the report was going to throw at us different types of written content. We had charts, takeaways for users, personalization, really tons to consider. This one uh, might be something that you've encountered in the past. Late stage feedback can be frustrating, but it can be really good as well. So on a big project like this, we knew that we'd get some feedback outside of the traditional feedback cycle. At some stage in the project, early on, late, post-launch, it was such a big campaign for the company that we knew it was coming down uh, along the line at some point. And you need to be ready to flex to this feedback, to those kind of curveballs, because yeah, it's coming whether you're ready or not. And a big, pro a, a big way of how we, we were actually able to flex to the feedback was through keeping control of the back end ourselves. Um, and this was especially important for future updates. So we knew that we'd need to build out a flexible CMS and be able to make edits within the team without additional dev support. So like you would the front end UX, we actually had to really think through the experience for editors on the back end of the site. And the editors were actually us. So let's jump into some of the work. And first up, I'm going to talk about the modular art direction. We had three main elements of our art direction for CX Trends. Our key graphic across the whole of our campaign was this idea of a puzzle piece with eight different blocks. And the eight different blocks represented the eight different chapters across the experience. We had a palette within the core Zendesk brand language, but then we also had a 3D recreation on the brand's multi-purpose relationships. 
These blocks could be broken out into their own curations. That was to give each chapter page their own personality as you um, go through the report. And the style also carried over to 3D pictograms. So for a long form editorial report like this, it was really important to be able to empower storytelling with these kind of visuals alongside all of the copy and charts and, and different pieces of content. For modularity though, actually the hero element for us was a simple stroke. So this was a unique element against the Zendesk mother brand. But really, more important for us, it was just so useful within site design as both a divider between different bits of content and also a boxing element. It was such a simple but effective kind of palette cleanser to manage the flow as you go between different sections within those different chapters in CX Trends. So that's the AD set. Now I'm going to move on to site design. And a modular design and this plug and play concept is really perfect for site design, especially in editorial project. Before jumping into the pixels though, you really need to set those parameters for the design system. And ahead of jumping into those pixels, we settled on 12 different content blocks. And it was from those 12 that we were able to recreate the entire report. That's including things like lists, obviously the heroes on pages, we had image and video embeds, and tons more. You can see a list there on the right hand side. Now, when you've got 7,000 words to, to get down, um, you really just need to get started with anything. You've got to break the blank page syndrome, lots of trial and error, lots of explorations, and it's repetitive. As a designer, the work you're doing might be ugly, but you've just kind of got to work through it. And things do start to come together. Um, we picked out our favorite iterations of each different block, and then we started to refine the design. And at that point, we were then laying out the blocks over a couple of real pages of content from within the report, which you can see here. That's three of our chapter pages in each of the different colors. And then when you're happy, I think for us, when we were kind of 90% there, that's when we really started to block out the system. So we collated all our different styles into one frame within Figma. And then from there is where we would pull for creating the rest of the pages within the report. Now, normally this would probably be the moment where you're creating components and setting up auto layout. Um, but we had to be really quick and agile. We actually left the blocks within each page open. For us, it was quicker to iterate um, and just meant we could drop in new content, pull things out, drop new things in, um, and just be a little bit more flexible on the fly. For other elements, though, like the global nav, we did use components, which was really helpful for us. And we also used prototyping a lot as we went through the design process, not just for testing, but actually for reviews. It was incredibly helpful, including our final sign off on the project, where all we did was hand over a prototype to stakeholders, no tips, no guidance, just throw them in the deep end and, and see what happens, because that's essentially what a real user is, is going to get when they're on the live site. When it came to those future updates down the line, which I mentioned, at that point, with everything locked, with the back end built, we did turn our design inside Figma into components and auto layout. And that then was really efficient and really quick for doing those future updates further down the line. With the full system set, then you can flow everything out. So here's what it looks like, uh, a full 7,000 word report for CX Trends, um, fully in design. That's just the 12 same core content blocks um, across the whole report, but each with different styling across each page, which you know, keeps things fresh and interesting um, across every section within, uh, within the report. So that's the design wrapped. Let's take a look at the back end. So naturally, site design, uh, site build, sorry, comes last on a web project. 
Um, but we'd really been thinking about the build since the very beginning of this CX Trends. We knew we wanted to maintain control of the live site through a CMS and through content blocks because we wanted to be able to build new pages ourselves further down the line. So often uh, a dev team might simply build your design. You hand off your files, work with them to, you know, to, to build it um, how you want it to. Um, but a project is really more efficient and successful when you're designing for the build. You need to think about how the back end is actually going to be implemented and whether your design system fits to the technical solution. To help with this, it's really good to actually include a dev team in your feedback. You want to involve them as early as possible, ideally from the strategy stage, and as frequently as possible as well. For us, that was really successful. And in the end, we almost matched one-to-one -one between the content blocks um, in the live CMS to what we've mapped out in the strategy phase. So a concise system is great, but you also need to build in that flexibility because you've got to keep the experience fresh, especially across such a long report as we were working on. So we use styling options within each of the 12 blocks in the backend CMS to allow that flexibility that we needed. This was across things like color, grid position, adding strokes to elements, that sort of thing. So we could change and, and morph each different content block and section as we needed. And because we'd done so much work up front to make our design approach so flexible, it was actually then a pretty straight shot to the finish line, a bit of a miracle. Somehow that was including translating and localization, localizing for those 14 languages too, all in the back end of the CMS. I've included a few shots here of pages from across the experience, but I'd really implore you to check it out at zendesk.com slash cxtrends. Before I go, uh, let's take a look though at some takeaways for how you can implement this kind of modular strategy and the ethos on one of your future projects. First up, and this is really important, is really knowing the brief. So working with, with modularity really opens up flexibility in your work, but you need to know the brief inside out to build the best solution. That starts with creative strategy and it goes beyond the basic deliverables. So you need to think about how you're actually going to implement the, deliver to the deliverables. You need to learn the edge cases of your project. What's the future state three, six months down the line? Are you going to be making updates? You need to know all that kind of stuff. And the modular approach also really requires consistency. Otherwise, things can go off the rails. So I'd really recommend using one hub, uh, like a page in Figma, to collate your art direction. That's where uh, folks on your team can grab consistent imagery. And it's where you're going to collaborate on everything your whole team will need. And as I mentioned when we were talking about the CMS approach, Finally, don't just think about how you're going to build your design, but you really need to design to the build. Think about how your design will factor into whatever technical solution you're going to go for. And that means bringing design and development so much closer together. Include your dev team in reviews, because they're the ones who are bringing suggestions for new technologies and how you actually implement the ideas. Um, I really love having developers along for the ride. Um, really through an entire design process. Now, before I go, I want to give a hat tip to the whole CX Trends team. It was really a mammoth project within Zendesk, and four special collaborators along the way uh, really deserve a, a personal mention, too. So I want to give a hat tip to Kimberly Ma, Corey Gedros, Philip Canaris, and Margarita Chincho, without whom we couldn't have made this project what it was and also to our dev partners at One Darnley Road as well. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope you enjoyed the talk. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at, at FindTheFire, and please go check out CX Trends at zendesk.com slash CX Trends. Enjoy the rest of config.